Hi, I'm Ben Marriott, and in this series, I'm going to be breaking down how to create these complex looking background animations using a few simple techniques, all in After Effects. In this video, we're tackling this lotus flower looking rings animation. And this project is available to download for free down in the description so you can take in a deeper dive. So we're starting in a new comp that's at 4K resolution, so we can do a bit of zooming without any loss of quality. And in this comp, I've got a color palette here, which is just an image I've imported to help me eye drop some colors for later. And I've also got a solid as a background layer just with a gradient ramp effect applied to it. Now let's draw our first set of rings. We're going to select our ellipse tool up here on the left. Let's give it a stroke and let's make that a cyan color. And let's change its fill to no fill. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option on my keyboard and click this box just to toggle through all the fill options. And now I'm gonna draw a ring around the middle, maybe just a little bit above. And I'm gonna hold Shift. So as I draw it, it maintains a circle and I'm gonna aim for the middle to be right at that crosshair. Okay, I think that was pretty close. I'm gonna to choose to view our title and action safe area so we get a look at the exact center of our comp and we're pretty close. I'm just gonna nudge that over with my keyboard till it lines up. There we are. And now let's open up our ellipse properties down here and the ellipse path and its size, maybe that's a bit too big. Let's go to 750. And I'm just gonna nudge that down again. So the bottom edge is on the center. And now we're going to add a repeater by selecting this arrow next to add and choosing repeater. And a repeater creates copies of your shape and allows you to make adjustments to all of them at the same time. So let's open up repeater and go to copies and let's increase that from three all the way up to 10. And if we open up the transform properties of the repeater, we can see it's already got 100 pixels added to its position on the right, which is why all of these copies are moving further away from our main circle to the right. So let's zero that out. And now all of our repeaters are in the exact same position as our main circle. And now we can adjust our rotation of our circle. And as we increase our rotation, we can see our copies appearing like this. And they're rotating around an anchor point, which looks to be in the middle here, just slightly off our center. Now to get these to rotate exactly around the very center of our comp in the middle here on this crosshair, we're going to need to adjust our anchor point. So here we've got our two properties of our anchor point, it's X and Y position. I'm going to adjust our Y position just until it lines up in the very middle. Your anchor point may be somewhere else, so you might need to adjust these a lot further. But for me, minus 33 has worked. And we also want our rotation amount to be enough so that our circles fill this whole circle, not just halfway. Now you could just keep dragging and eyeballing it, waiting for it to line up, or you could figure out the math yourself, or we could let After Effects do some simple maths for us. So if we click into this number, we can start typing some basic math operations in here. So we're gonna start with 360, which is the total number of degrees in a circle, and then forward slash, which means division. So 360 divided by, and then we're gonna enter our number of copies, which in this case is 10. So it's 360 forward slash 10. And then if we press enter, it calculates that, which is 36. And we can see that that angle perfectly lines up all of our copies. Now that's a bit of an easier number I've chosen there, so we can quickly check that it's correct. But if you had a really awkward number of copies, those basic math operations really help. So now let's animate this rotation property. I'm gonna keyframe it at the very start. And then at the end, I'm going to increase that. And I'm just gonna click and drag until I find a position where all of the circles line up. There, 60 degrees seems to work. And now if we play that back, we get a kind of mesmerizing lotus flower kind of effect. And that's all just from two keyframes. So now let's rename that layer rings small because we always label our layers. And we're gonna duplicate this to create another variation. And we do that with control or command D and I'm gonna change that color to yellow so I can know what I'm looking at at a glance and rename that one to rings large. And for this one, I'm gonna change its stroke from that cyan color to yellow. And now I'm gonna go in and adjust some of those ellipse properties. So if I click and drag on its ellipse size and I'm gonna do that slowly so we can see what's happening. It's still got all the repeaters attached, but just changing the size is giving a completely different effect. And if we push it far enough, we can see that it's created this almost sort of donut shape. And if we change its position, we can see that that makes the donut thicker or thinner. So I'm gonna keyframe both of those at the start, both the size and the position. I'm gonna move its size a little down so it looks like it's more hugging that smaller ring. And then at the very end of our comp, I'm gonna decrease the position. I'm gonna put that all the way back down to zero. And then I'm gonna increase the size. So it's still sort of hugging the outside of our small ring. And that position should stay consistent throughout the animation. So now it's going from a smaller ring to a thicker, wider, larger ring. And now we get this really interesting effect. With repeaters, it is really fun to just play around with the values, tweaking things like the size and the position and some of the repeater properties as well. Like maybe you wanna adjust the scale. 
all the anchor point again and get some really interesting effects. It's just really fun to play around with the values and try shifting a few numbers to see what results come out of it. And tiny adjustments can have really big impacts. To add a bit more color to this comp, I'm gonna duplicate our ring small with Control or Command D. And on the bottom one, I'm going to add a fill by alt clicking the box and change that fill to a purple. And then I'm gonna draw a mask in the middle of it. So with our ellipse tool selected, make sure that this box is selected. Tool creates mask. And then I'm gonna hold shift and just drag a circle around the middle. I'm gonna double click that and then position that exactly in the center. I'm gonna change my mask from add to subtract and then press F on our keyboard to bring up mask feather and drag that out so we get a nice gradient. And there we are, we get a nice bit of color in the middle and I wanna do the same for our rings large as well. And then we have some hypnotizing ring animations. And if we head back into our background comp, I've had some very slight scaling. So it scales from 50% and then scales actually all the way up to 75%. So when we play that back, we get a nice zoom in and looks a little bit more intense. And here's what that looks like in the main comp. Check out the next videos in this playlist to learn how to animate the other background effects.